So I'm pretty sure it's supposed to just click in place and stay there. <gasps> Hello and welcome to another Nihongo Gamer video. I'm very excited because today I'm going to be unboxing and going into the build for Frame Arms Girl Hatsune Miku. Now, this is really exciting because I was in talks with Kotobukiya, who sent me this, by the way, free of charge, so that I could review it and build it for you. Just Frame Arms Girl. It's not Frame Arms, it's Frame Music Girl. Anyway, I think it's gonna be really exciting, so let's go ahead and unbox it. Hatsune Miku there on the front of the box. I can't believe, honestly, when she told me that there is a Hatsune Miku version of Frame Arms Girl, my head literally exploded. Well, the top end of the box base end of the box and then on the side you've got information about what the doll actually looks like on the inside you've got her standing on her plinth there various different what, what are these speaker microphone stand type things on the side you can see that she's very poseable and then they've got the back view and the front view there on the other side and then on the other side here you can see you've got different options for the expressions that you can put on the face so obviously if you're into Instagram figure photography where you like you know take the figures to exciting places you make little action scenes and stuff it would appear that there's the looking forward looking to the side and looking to the other side options on these stickers honestly I'm really excited because I have not done a whole lot of Gundam building since I was a kid and this is a really cool way to get back into it because you've got your favorite waifu characters, but you get to build them! I have now experienced building a Frame Arm Girls, which is the one that I bought as a gift for someone. I've now experienced it, so I know kind of what to expect. We're going to show you the parts inside, then I'm going to live stream the actual building of this figure. And then after that, I'll give you a close look of what the actual completed model looks like. So let's go ahead and take it out of the box. I think before it used to only be robots because, you know, obviously the human's not made up of little plastic parts and metal parts like a robot is. Kotobuki is like, Hey, why don't we just build human characters as well? And I don't think Kutubuki is the first one to have ever done it. Why can't I get it out the box? Oh, there we go. All right. Here are the things that you get inside. It looks like inside the box you get all the different plastic pieces. Obviously, you've got teal green for the hair parts. You've got all the skin parts, all the black tights parts, body parts little parts for the speakers. Check this out. Oh, this is really cool. The parts that are multicolored are in a separate little bag. We've got the teal and black parts. It looks like these are going to be, you know, the sleeves that go on her arms or maybe the bits that go on her skirt. And while I've got this camera zoomed in, obviously you've got the different hand parts. You can have her pointing, you can have her holding things, you can have her hands wide open, or you can have her hand in a fist shape. Fairly serious looking face here, slightly more neutral face, and the mouth open, happy face. And it looks like one more piece here, this is the maybe the back end of the skirt. These are the speaker stands, so I just looked on the side of the box. I think it's brilliant that they're musical note shaped, they're also teal green in colour, and they also look like side ponytails, and because there's two of them, they're like the twin tails of Hatsune Miku. Ah, oh, that's just brilliant little touches like that. Really do it for me. And the all important instruction manual. I actually don't know if this is like an English version or a Japanese version. I've actually just recently built one of these and the instructions are not hard to get through even if you don't speak Japanese. But let me double check with Kotobuki. I'll find out whether they actually have an English version of this as well. This is what the instruction manual looks like. This is the front page, obviously. You open it up and you've actually got numbers and the shapes of the parts. So as long as you can read you know, alphabet letters and numbers, you should be able to follow the pictorial guide. So first page, second page, you can see pretty much you can get all the way to the end without reading anything really complicated. Ah, and one last thing that I forgot to mention, I actually picked this up, this is a pack of nippers. This is essentially the cheapest pack of nippers I could find, they only cost about 635 yen, which is what, like five dollars? You can build this without these nippers, but if you have the nippers then you get a much cleaner cut. Let's build it. Attention, peligro de asphyxia. Ohayou gozaimasu. Not to mention, I heard, whoa, subscribed for six months. Thank you very much. She's got temporary tattoos. I discovered these are not stickers. What you see here is the Hatsune Miku Frame Music Girl 14 ans et plus. I might need some supervision. <laughs> Heresy called coffee instead of the one true drink called tea. You want to know what I have to say to that? Mmm. Mmm. That's what I think about your one true drink. What? What you get in here? I actually saw this in the Frame Arms Girl. Frame Arm Girls. Fr frame Arms. I can't remember the anime. I actually didn't really know much about building, so I didn't even know that you could buy these tools. 
These are called nippers. Nip, 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 nip. You use this to nip off the bits. Pick up the pieces. And I didn't even have nippers. Last time I built this, I did it with a pocket knife. It was stressful. Rare footage of Dihongo actually following instructions. I've just had to build that out of like three different pieces. It's literally just a piece of hair. This is the most unbelievably small. Can you see how small these bits are? That's literally just with a tiny bit of hair. It's like a cute anime girl warhammer. Yeah. If you ever wanted to see the inside of Miku's head, got the hair on the back, the base hair, and we've now built the, the ball and socket joint. Are those God hands nippers? No, they are. Thanks for asking though. They are enjoy hobby life. Baby nipper. I bought the cheapest ones I could find and that these were these were it. Can you see how ridiculous this is? Look how small this is! Let me cherry pick a large one here. That's the size of a coffee bean. And that's the size of the pieces that I have to build. Stressed doesn't even begin to describe how I feel right now. Maybe if I had teeny tiny hands, maybe this wouldn't be so bad. There you go, I got it in. Okay, it says be very careful, do not break this part. Can you see how small that is? See that where my finger is there? That's what we're cussing off. It's the... It's the microphone part. Can someone pat me on the back, please? For being able to build this. The right side with the microphone. We get to cut the hair off now. Build... Oh, check this out. So these pieces, the Miku hair, they look like this. Ball jointed hair. You may recognize these are the hair parts. Oh yeah! We are almost there. It's complete! I finished frame arms. I'm gonna choose the happy one. It's looking pretty good. <laughs> That's enough of that. Holy, holy crap, Nihongo, please. All right, I've now completed the build of the frame music girl, or rather frame arms girl, frame music girl, Hatsune Miku. I've got the finished build here. As you can see, I've managed to make her stand up, which was fairly difficult, because obviously if you get the angle slightly wrong, then she doesn't, she doesn't stand up. There we go. And now she does have a little plinth that she can stand on, but I'm not using it at the moment because I quite like to see the figures just standing up of their own accord, of their own strength. You may notice that she's not wearing this extra piece here. This is actually going to go on the back of her, and I had this clicked on before, but it comes off quite easily. I don't know if you're supposed to glue these things on or something, I'm not super familiar with it, but I don't think so. So that should attach like a little belt. And that kind of helps it stay on because it, it wraps around. Aha, but as you can see, the other parts have fallen off now. So I'm pretty sure it's supposed to just click in place and stay there, but it doesn't. <gasps> I thought I lost that. This necktie doesn't like certain angles. So let's see if I can get her to stand facing the other direction so you can see the belt on the back and if I have a turn around onto the front. She does have little speaker stands which I will now show you as well. Here's one, two, I'll just put them behind so you can see this is what they looked at, like at the end. I think the speaker stands are probably my favorite part. So there you have it, Frame Music Girl Miku. Now that I have unboxed it, built it on stream. In the end, I only managed to build about 30% of it. The other 70% I had to do after the stream on a separate day. And now that I've tried to move it around and pose it as well, I would say that the Frame Music Girl product is probably not for people like me. In my spare time, I like to play games that are really difficult so I can like practice this one thing that shouldn't really be possible that then it becomes possible because you practiced it really hard. Or I like to sit around at a cafe brainstorming ideas for comics or something. I'm not the type of person I've discovered through building this that likes to go through building figure kits. And now here's, here's the reason why. I think there's a couple different kinds of figure kit that you can buy. And the type of figure kit that this is, is a fully painted, I mean, it's got most of the details. You could go in with a black pen and you could color in some of the more detailed parts and you can add the decals and stuff. 
but essentially it has a way that it's supposed to be painted. It has a look that it's supposed to look. And it's not, when you're building this, it's not like a super creative process. So you're not shaping the foot in exactly the right shape you want. You're not giving it exactly the right curve that you want. It's a puzzle. It's for people who like to put do jigsaw puzzles. You know exactly how it's gonna look at the end and you just need something to do for three or four hours. So for example, if I were going on like a country getaway and I needed something to do for five hours on a Sunday while we chill out waiting for lunch to be prepared or something, then this would be perfect. Cause it's like, ah, oh, there's nothing else to do and it's raining outside and I just need something fun to do indoors that doesn't take too much brain power. I could even do it kind of while watching TV. That's like the perfect time that I would want to do something like this. But I just generally don't end up in that situation very often. And so I don't really need to go through the motions of building a figure when I feel like there's probably some sort of manufacturing machinery that puts toys together that could have done this better than I could. And so now what I've ended up with is this little three or four hour task, which was enjoyable. It's not like Lego. When you're building Lego, you know that after you've finished it, you could slightly change it. You could build new things onto it. This, once you've built it, this is how it is. Unless you go deeper into actually cutting your own plastic parts and doing your own paint jobs and all that. In which case, you would probably want to buy a figure that has no color on it at all. So in my case, I would probably want to buy something like this, give myself a three or four hour task while watching some anime, building this figure, and then I would want to be able to use it for like Instagram photography or something. And here's where I have my second issue. It is quite delicate. Actually, what I think you want to do with this is build it and then put it on your desk or put it on the wall and decorate it somewhere. This is not the sort of figure that I would want to bring out with me for Instagram photography. And the reason is that it is incredibly delicate. As you've just seen while I was trying to stand it up. So if I come at the wrong angle, I could pop the tie off. As you can see, just in the process of showing you that, the collar part has also come off. And I guess I could glue that in place, but then I risk well, basically it looks like there's glue everywhere and it doesn't look quite as clean. The whole posing process would be a little bit too stressful for me. So if you're the type of person that needs, who loves jigsaw puzzles, this could be perfect for you. But for me, it's like most of the things that I would want to do with it, like figure photography, would end up, it'd end up kind of breaking the toy in the process and I, I think that would kind of stress me out. But as you can see, it does look the part. It looks, it looks brilliant when it's standing still, not doing anything. If I were a kid, I would want to play with this afterwards. I would build it thinking, oh man, I'm gonna make this my main character. They're gonna run around, they're gonna hold all the laser rifles and they're going to fight wars and it's gonna be exciting. But what they don't know is that if you tried to play with this as a toy, you'd be quite frustrated because every time you play with it, the collar falls off and like, I've, I've got the leg on quite strongly here, but the Gorai, the original Frame Arms Girl, kit like the leg just wouldn't stick on properly and it well it would stick on but it would it would come off if you even vaguely tried to play with it so it's not a toy for playing with even though it may look on the box like that might be an ideal way to do it if you're only staying at home and you're making little dioramas then this could actually be perfect you've got all the time in the world to pose it and make sure that nothing falls off get it into exactly the right position so in conclusion it's a model kit and it was fun to build, but the whole time I felt like I was doing the job of a machine and I felt like a machine would probably do it better than I could. If I were to get into it and really, I don't know, challenge myself to do these model kits as quickly as possible or to have all the parts as clean as possible or to have it as completely done with all the decals and the painting and make sure there are no sharp parts jutting out of the, I mean, I did my best with the nippers to cut all the sharp bits off but I could, you could go even further and make it absolutely perfect. You could spray paint extra bits of it afterwards if you wanted. There are things you could do with it, but I discovered that the, the task itself, I would describe it as a great time killer for people who are fans of anime, Hatsune Miku, the games, stuff like that. It just so happens that I don't really have the time for time killing activities. So maybe it's not the perfect thing for me. Maybe Gundam, Gundam style kits and Miku kits 
are not the perfect activity for me, but you probably know yourself quite well. If you're the type of person who likes puzzles, then this could be perfect. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Thanks Kotobukiya for sending me the Frame Music Girl kit. I do have one more, so I probably will build that and then show you the build quality of that. Compared to other fully, fully sculpted figures, it's poseable, but a bit like a Figma character. You know, you can see a lot of the, the gaps in the joints between like the neck and the arm. It still looks like a toy. That's the thing about these these figures. You can they, you can pose them any way you like, but they look like toys because you've got all the joints. Something that did quite impress me is the way that you can the way it's got joints in the feet. Can you see? There's actual there's an actual joint here on the foot that clicks forward like this. So if you wanted, you could have her do poses like this, where her leg. Oh, that's brilliant! <laughs> that's actually worked out way better than I was expecting. You can have the leg bent at an angle like this and have the toe. It's nice to have a joint where the toe is so you can create poses like this. That's actually turned out better than I was expecting. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Don't forget to comment, subscribe, share the links and all this great, all that great, all this great stuff, all that great stuff. And I'll see you in the next Nihongo Gamer video and or stream or on Discord or on Twitter or any of the millions of other ways that you can uh, find me. See you next time.